This exhibition tells the story of a journey, a journey of artistic discovery that began in 1936 when the 10-year-old Leon Kossoff found himself for the first time in the National Gallery. He does not recall how he made his way there from his childhood home of Hackney in the East End of London, but he has powerful memories of being entranced by Rembrandt's Woman in a Stream and feeling, in his own words, that he was discovering a whole new world of light and space and presence that was opening up before him and experiencing a growing awareness of the possibilities of visual experience. The National Gallery collection was to become of crucial importance to Kossoff. Following his national service, he enrolled at St. Martin's School of Art in 1949. His education continued at the Royal College of Art, to where he moved in 1953. It was during his student years that his regular visits to make drawings from the collection began. Kossoff's earliest drawings from National Gallery paintings are dark and heavily worked as the young artist's gaze is focused intensely upon the originals that he is beginning to form a close attachment to. More recent work is lighter in tone, more exuberant and light-filled, and shows a greater freedom that is perhaps the result of familiarity and experience. These drawings, after the great Venetian Veronese, were made in the 1980s. Occasionally, Kossoff has made his own painted responses to National Gallery paintings, and two of them, made from Rembrandt's Little Ecce Homo in 1999 and Poussin's Triumph of Pan, made in 1998, are included here. Kossoff has been drawing from the originals, however, again and again for decades. His awareness of Rembrandt's Ecce Homo dates back for as long as the artist can remember. Repeated drawings made over a period of decades forge a relationship with the painting that goes deeper than the merely visual. And through this process of re-encountering, Kossoff's painted response finally emerges 50 years or more after first being aware of the painting. In the 1980s, Kossoff began to make prints from National Gallery paintings by drawing directly onto zinc plates while standing in front of the originals. These plates are then printed in the studio of friend and fellow artist Anne Dauka, with whom Kossoff has been working on his prints for over 20 years. This particular print was done very, very quickly in comparison to some of the other earlier prints which seemed to take literally over a period of two years. It was done on the back of an old plate, but that plate was chosen because it was appropriate. Every mark on the back of that plate was somehow linked in with this painting, and it happened terribly quickly, this. It was a plate that was battered and used and somehow was relevant to the subject matter as well in the fact that it had been used and abused. Poussin's Triumph of Pan was acquired by the National Gallery in 1982, 25 years ago, and it immediately became a favourite. Kossoff's relationship with Poussin has led him to produce a prodigious amount of work, both prints and drawings. It is a feeling of mystery and beauty that attracts Kossoff to Poussin, He has described Poussin as creating a very strange and special world. Kossoff was born in 1926 on the City Road in the East End of London, very near to Christchurch Spitalfields, Nicholas Hawksmoor's great masterpiece of 1729. This part of London is where Kossoff grew up 
and where he began to form that deep bond with the city and its inhabitants that has provided him with such a rich and rewarding subject for the past 50 years or more. A large-scale painting of the church is included in this exhibition. The painting hangs alongside a drawing made in the National Gallery from Poussin's Cephalus and Aurora. Despite their difference in size and medium, the painting and drawing share the same kind of energy that seems to skip across the wall from the painting to the drawing and back again. In the studio, it's only about that far yeah. apart. Yeah, yeah. I'd st still feel... Yeah, I think so as well, yeah. yeah. I would say that makes much more sense. I think that, that is sense. much, much better. Yes. Yeah. You can see the drawing now before the drawing was kind of diminished. And I, I actually also think in this Poussin, not just in relation to this, but in Poussin and in a lot of this work in here, there's this feeling of yearning. And I think that comes across very, very strong in these. And in the prints and in the drawings, there's this power and there's this fragility which is united in the best of the work, I think. And I think in the actual paintings, you've got this kind of this powerful construct with this fragile mark and every single mark on there is relevant to the, the whole unit it's in. Kossoff has drawn and painted this building, familiar since his childhood, many times. The paintings always begin with a visit to the church to draw it afresh, as if the artist is perpetually seeking a new experience of the building. Indeed, these re-encounterings through drawing are no different to the way that Kossoff works from the old master paintings, deepening the familiarity, experiencing the building, rather than simply seeing it. Following a recent December morning spent drawing from Rubens's Judgment of Paris, Kossoff produced two plates that he felt might be successful when printed, one an etching, the other a dry point. Etching is a process that involves drawing with a needle through a specially prepared ground, which is a wax-like varnish that is applied to the plate before the drawing is made. The silver colour of the line seen here is in fact the exposed zinc, where the ground has been scratched off. The brown colour is the ground. The plate is then immersed in a small bath of ferric chloride, which is corrosive and eats into the metal that has been exposed by the drawn lines of the needle. The rest of the plate is unaffected, being protected by the ground, which the ferric chloride cannot penetrate. The chemical bites the lines into the plate, which will then be able to hold the printing ink when the plate is printed. After a suitable period of time, the plate is taken out of the ferric chloride and rinsed clean. The ground is cleaned off with white spirit and the plate is inked. Printing ink is thick and tacky and is first applied over the whole of the plate. It is then wiped off but ink will be retained in the grooves that were etched into the plate by the ferric chloride. Finally, the wiped plate is placed face up on the bed of the printing press and a sheet of paper placed over it. A set of thick blankets is placed over the paper and the first impression is taken. Unfortunately, in this case, the print has not succeeded to the artist's satisfaction and the plate is abandoned. But there is a better result with the dry point. In this process, the lines of the drawing are scratched directly into the plate by the artist himself. There is no chemical action needed. 
Dry point lines, when printed, are softer and richer than those of an etching. The edges of the plate are filed down to prevent them from cutting through the paper or the blankets on the printing press. The plate is then inked and then wiped in the same way as for the etching. Ink remains in the lines that the artist has drawn and also clings to the displaced metal still attached to the surface of the plate. It is this that gives a dry point line its characteristic richness and softness known as a burr. Look how fresh it is. The plate, drawn on earlier that morning in front of the Rubens, is printed and assessed by the artist who decides to add some more lines. He does this quickly and the inking and printing process is repeated for the second state. No, that's better. That's better. That's marvellous. By its nature, the printing process reverses the composition and so here we see the shepherd Paris on the left and the three goddesses of Rubens' painting now on the right. Rubens' painting has long been a favourite of Kossoff's. He sees it as an intensely personal painting, with the three goddesses not really goddesses at all, but three portraits of Hélène Formont, Rubens' second wife, with whom he enjoyed an apparently blissful marriage. Kossoff has worked from this painting literally hundreds of times, and this print, made on December the 15th, 2006, alive with its kinetic rhythms, is simply his most recent response to a painting that is, for the artist, one of the greatest inventions in a collection of great inventions that has had a deep and profound influence on the creation of his own compositions. Drawing from these paintings, I mean, you'd have to dismiss this idea about copying, because if you, you're using your optic nerve, but you are engaging your mind with the mind of the painter um, and that's really important. The thing that's peculiar to all the drawings is that they were all done in front of the paintings, every single one, and the etchings as well, they were done in front of the work. After endless attempts of drawing and repetition, of drawing and drawing again, over a period of years till he got to where he wanted to be.